For example, if we think that this force is proportional to the uh, velocity gradient, then we call that a viscous force. Okay? We neglected it. Why? How can we neglect the forces? Yes, viscous force is small compared with the normal force. Suppose I have balloon, okay, and I compress it and then release it, then the balloon will oscillate. Okay, and there could be some force that is acting between the surface of balloon and the fluid that is inside of balloon. There is some friction force. Okay, if there is no friction force, the balloon will oscillate forever. Right? So that means that this relation essentially says there is no damping, no viscous force. Okay? Right? In other words, the fluid we are considering behaves like this. When I shot over here, and if it, if it is one dimensional acoustic wave, like, uh, you know, the acoustic pressure wave inside of the duct, and then anybody far from me, for example, 10 kilometers from me, can hear what I am talking. Okay, so this is the model that neglect this cause force or friction force in general or tangential force. Okay. So if somebody said that the Euler, using Euler equation, we can predict how much energy is dissipated, then the answer is, no, that is not true. Okay? That kind of a question is a very strong candidate of the keys problem that you will take on Thursday. Okay? So I will make a multiple choice key problem that says, Please, please answer whether or not this is right or wrong. Okay? The reason why I'm designing that kind of question is to, is, is to uh, emphasize that the physical understanding, physical basic understanding, physical measures is the important thing of this lecture. This lecture is not well designed to improve your technique to solve a certain problem. Okay. I will not ask you to solve a certain problem within limited time. I'm not asking you to solve a certain problem, for example, using eigenvalue, solving eigenvalue problem, I mean, for, for the time I, I give. Because I assume that you can solve it if you understand the basic principle. Even you can hire somebody else to solve the problem. But the reason why we are taking this course is to understand the basic physical measures that dominate acoustical phenomena. Okay? And the other one that relates between the pressure and the density, what it is? That is a state equation. Okay. A small change in pressure with intensity, what it is? What is physical meaning? 
how much pressure I need to have a unit density change. Okay? Or how much pressure I need to have make a unit volume change. Okay? And we found that that is related with the square of speed of sound. Normally we found it this relation experimentally. Okay. Often we call this constitutive relation. This is the reason why we call this constitutive relation is because this constituted relation that constitute between two paraphysical parameters P prime and rho prime. Okay? That's why this is related with bulk modulus of gas. What is the meaning of bulk modulus? The bulk modulus says that the how much pressure I need to induce unit volume change. Right? So, for a water case, how much pressure, the pressure I need to change the unit density change of water would be much, much greater than the pressure I need to, to have a unit density change of air. That's why C square of air is much, much larger than C square of water. Okay, if you if, if that that gives idea the how much the speed of sound you will experience when you shout in a in a, a very foggy hot bathroom. In the bathroom, the the force you required to change the unit density would be larger or smaller than the pressure that required to change the density in normal, this kind of air. It could be larger or small, smaller. Okay. Temperature rise means there are, means what? The molecular activity of gas is more, more active, therefore, what? The P prime over O prime of hot air is larger or smaller? Hmm? Should be larger. Right? Okay. So there are a lot of physics we can we can think about by just seeing this relation. Okay.